Hi guys, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at five parsecs from home. Gruffy Crow. Okay, this has literally just arrived. It's still in its cellophane. Okay, so the reason why I decided to buy this was because uh, I have been putting a lot of enthusiasm into various sci-fi bits and pieces. I've been working on a little bit of sci-fi terrain or scatter terrain at least. And uh, you may have seen the videos from my Stargrave crew and my zombies and things like that. But I'm finding it having a hard time trying to get some games of Stargrave. And there doesn't seem to be quite the enthusiasm. I think that's partly to do with uh, people that might be interested. I've still been playing Frostgrave 2nd Edition because that only came out fairly recently. And uh, sort of lockdowns and stuff and restrictions like that. Uh, but also Silver Bayonet, I think, has taken a bit of Stargrave's thunder. Um, so... I know there are solo rules in uh, Quarantine 37, I can never remember what number that is. Um, and I will still want to check those out, and I've still got some stuff uh, I'm preparing for that. But I was reading about this, and it just seems that little bit more in depth, and like it might capture my imagination and force me to finally play a solo game, because I've been meaning to play something solo for a while. Uh, Rangers of Shadowdeep. Uh, I love the background, I love the book, that, that beautiful leather-bound book. And I set the table up to play that with myself a couple of times and never just quite got round to it. Whereas hopefully uh, this will capture my attention some more and I'll finally try out uh, a bit of solo wargaming. And uh, I've been seeing quite a lot of buzz about this game, uh, so I kind of wanted to get the book and get an idea of you know what's getting people excited about it. This is the third edition of this game. It's been around for a while and I think this is the first time it's been... Uh, sort of published in a sort of posh all color book like this. Uh, it's being published by Mephidius. Uh, they are the guys that are doing the uh, sort of Fallout and uh, Skyrim games. Oh, first thing, this is literally the first time I've opened it. Oh, it's got that lovely new book smell. And what's hitting me straight away, this is like the first page almost, we've got beautiful art. And just a quite a nice sort of fresh layout there and already so uh flicking through this is one of the first bits about putting your crew together and there's these sort of uh sort of beautiful flavor images here uh for the different types of sort of alien race sort of archetypes so yep yeah, so i'm gonna run through this i will just give a scan through the whole book and i'll start putting the crew together and i'll let you know what i think okay i've uh spent a few hours sort of looking through the book and it is fascinating. I have never seen so many roll tables in any book ever in my life. Uh, actually, it looks like it is going to be a lot of fun. And the first job is to roll up a new crew. So it looks like it would be fairly normal to have six uh, crew slots. So I am slowly building this uh, table. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've just put this together to recall my rolls and uh, create my crew. Um, I said six seems to be the sort of standard and you have three that are always going to be human Obviously my captain I said I've got some miniatures in mind that I want to use for this crew uh, and I definitely want this guy to be my captain uh, So obviously he's an elf, but for the purpose of this he is going to be human And I think I want something along those lines uh, a nice sort of diverse crew because you can have two that could be aliens and one that can be. and I'm gonna do a, there's two methods in the book one is choose your miniatures and try and stack them up to match and uh, one set that is just completely randomize everything it'd be quite fun to randomize everything but I think I'm gonna do a kind of little bit of a mixture uh, between the two as you can see down here I've set myself up a little rolling tray uh, with a percentile dice and another d10 and all the tables are pretty much 1 to 100 so this should be able to give me all of those options. Okay, I've changed my mind a little bit. I'm gonna have another human. I'm gonna have a strange character because I think that might make for some interesting rolls. So let's do some rolling. So the strange character table is pretty cool and I'm hopefully I can pretty much find any miniature that'll fit what I need for that. So initially we get a 24. That would be a stalker. Now I've not read all of these. So let's see what a stalker says and see if I've got a sort of correct miniature. Blue skinned human gene mods rarely seen on account of their innate teleportation ability. That seems uncannily useful. Let's have that then. So they've got basically the same stats as a human. So that they have an ability where they can roll a 1d6 
six, and then it can instantly teleport uh, that distance instead of moving normally. Okay, we're going to add another time in here because we are going to find out what these characters' backgrounds are. Now I've got a bit of an idea about my lead character's uh, idea. So he, so he's definitely the sort of guy that's going to be from a dystopian city. Which what that does is that adds plus one speed. So I picked that on background rather than the uh, ability that it'd give me. Because uh, there's various different effects or resources or uh, extra gear you can pick up depending on what your background is. So let's find human number two. Uh, where are they from? So what's that? That is nine. So they are also from a dystopian city because five to nine is dystopian city. So they're also a little bit quicker. So I like the idea already that these guys are friends. Uh, they grew up together. So who's the third member of the crew? 53. This is someone from a tech guild. They've got some pretty cool uh, bonuses. So they have an extra savvy. We have got some credits to start my sort of fund off here. Uh, so these guys give me a 1d6 credits. So we've got four credits, it's not too bad. And he gets a high tech weapon. So we'll find that out in a second. Okay, so my next human. So we have 75. That means they're from the Orphan Utility Program, which sounds kind of upsetting. And it means we get a patron, which could be an interesting uh, sort of storyline option. We've got this or rescued orphan um, that gives us a story point. And, uh, and yeah, and some sort of background. Maybe this is someone we've rescued. It's giving me uh, sort of Firefly vibes for sure. Where did the strange teleporting blue character come from? 79. She came from an isolationist enclave. So clearly in this enclave they are messing around with some genetic technology uh, and making these these mutants. But she brings with her some news and uh, that gives me two quest rumours. So we'll see how useful they are at some point. I'm getting a bit lost in the book. It kind of suggests that if uh, you have a bot you uh, skip uh, step three, which is this backgrounds and motivations that we're going to do, uh, and just go straight to step four. And I'm assuming you then still work out the gear and everything. Uh, so that's fine. So the bot's just a bot. Uh, he doesn't have a background. I think my captain probably picked him up on his way up to space, fixed him up from various parts. And we've altered my little uh, table again. So we're going to have a look at their motivations and their classes next. So why is my captain doing what he's doing, jettisoning himself into space after adventure? Well, according to the table, he's doing it for power. Now, I don't like that. That's not the motivation of my character. This is the one character I am kind of role playing. He's doing it for fame, for sure. Let's see what about that first mate he grew up with, though. Why is he doing this, what he's doing? 78. Faith. That's a funny answer. Faith in his captain, maybe? Faith in something else? Maybe we'll find out later on the line. He has one... He has one rumour and one story point. Okay, this uh, this person from the, uh, the tech guild that we picked up. Why are they doing what they're doing? 67. Revenge. So they've left their tech guild. On a mission of revenge and joined a private crew that's pretty cool they've ended up with a rival see i love the way this is building a story already and our orphan our poor orphan she's just after discovery which i love is sort of nice and naive and 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 that's cool so because of that she ends up with a savvy i don't know why i'm saying she i haven't decided what i'm using for this yet so yeah, plus savvy and a plus a gear, so which is pretty cool. Uh, and then our mutant from the isolationist enclave. Why have they joined the crew? 28. Just to escape. Oh, that lines up beautifully. And they have plus one speed as well. So we've got quite a fast little crew going on here. 
what kind of class were these people? Uh, you know, were they criminals or scientists before they, they started this adventure? 41. Negotiator. No, that's not right for my captain. He was definitely a sort of more of a scavenger. So let's have a rumor and a high tech weapon. So we've got room, another bonus there. Uh, okay, what about the class for our sort of friend of my captain? So doing this for faith. 76. He's a troubleshooter. That seems pretty down to earth and someone that might be useful to have around. My tech are out for revenge. 80 on the dot. He's become a bounty hunter. Trying to hunt down his uh, his rival. Our orphan on a mission of discovery. 50. Starship crew. Joined a starship crew to uh, to see the world. Ended up joining a pirate crew. Let's have a look at my escaping mutant. 25 mercenary that adds some much needed combat skill so i've started a new section down here for crew equipment we get three rolls on the military weapon table if we got any savvy increases which we got a couple uh we can take that on the high-tech weapon table instead we also get another three rolls on the low-tech weapon table we get one roll on the gear table one roll on the gadget table and then we get credit per crew so that, I mean, that, I guess that takes us up to 10 credits. Now I've got no idea what any of these mean. So we've got some high-tech weapon rolls additional to this anyway. So let's work through the stuff we've uh, already uh, picked up. So high-tech weapon on my captain. Now I kind of want him to have a dueling pistol. I've no idea what, no, oh, I don't want him to have a hand cannon. Hand cannon's my go-to uh, weapon in any computer game. So I'm just gonna straight up give him a hand cannon. His friend gets a low-tech weapon, so let's roll the dice for that. So an 85 would give him just a blade. I'm going to hand these out to the guys they kind of came with. The Tekka bounty hunter out for revenge brought his own high and low-tech weapons. So his high-tech weapon is a 52, which is... He's also rocking a blade. My often turned up with some gear. She brought her own scanner bot. I keep calling her, is she? No idea what that does. I'm a mercenary mutant. Brought along a 36, which is another laser cannon. So for the rest of the crew, we get, I can't see any downside to rolling on the high tech table. So let's take two more rolls on that. 75, we've just picked up a, a blast rifle. A glare sword, I know who I'm giving that to. All right, and the third roll on the regular table. So we get a 69, which is a auto rifle. Nice, simple weapon, I feel. Sounds standard. So for gear, we get a, can't work out what that is. Is that a 69? Here's some loaded dice. Nice. And we get a gadget. Uh, 99. That is a stim pack. So the mutant's definitely getting her glare sword. My captain's getting his loaded dice. So I've skipped ahead a little bit. And it looks like you can pay three credits for additional rolls. So I'm going to go for that. I'm going to have another roll on the military weapons. I really want a marksman's rifle. But instead we just get another auto rifle and we have seven credits left. And I think that'll do for the weapons. We also have a ship. Uh, and what kind of ship do we have? 23. That's a strange alien vessel. Very uh, far escape. Is that how my captain escaped his original planet? His life is a scavenger in a dystopian city by discovering this strange alien vessel. It does mean we are in debt, though, by twenty-one. And the last table in the crew creation section is just for flavour, apparently. No extra bonuses or results from this. It's how they met. 
I'm already sort of forming my own story, but apparently they met uh, through being in trouble with the authorities. And they are best characterised as cutthroat outlaws. Now, I knew these guys were going to be pirates from the get-go. Um, so I love that. I've got a completely random set of roles. And I've also imposed my own sort of narrative on them. Um, but what we've basically got is we've got my captain and his best friend from back home who, through being in trouble with the authorities, have picked up a bounty hunter that used to be in a tech guild who's out for revenge against his rival. Uh, we've picked up an orphan who was just out to see the stars. Uh, we've picked up a escaped mutant from an isolationist enclave uh, who was working as a mercenary. And we've got a robot. So the next step, obviously, is to pick the miniatures. Uh, we do have some more roles to make at some point. We're going to have to work out who that rival is and who our patron is. Uh, but we're going to leave those until the sort of pro proper moments, I think, in the story. Uh, I'm also going to tidy this table this table up a little bit uh, and we'll uh, sort of put all the these bits and pieces together so I can kind of keep track of them a little bit better and maybe sort of smarten this up. And obviously I've still got to come up with names for the rest of my crew, uh, which is all kind of good fun. So I'm already enjoying this book uh, in the few minutes we were doing that. Looking forward, I think a lot of this game can be played you know, I don't think I'm going to have to read everything and then sort of know everything before I play. Uh, I'll have another flick through the sort of movement and shooting rules and what have you. Uh, but everything else, like the missions and stuff, are all sort of created through these sort of tables. Um, and I think it's fantastic, actually, and I'm really looking forward to getting a game in of this. So for my crew, the models I've chosen, obviously I was going to use uh, this guy as my captain. Absolutely love the sculpt. Uh, my crew are all from Imitation and Life Miniatures uh, and they were put together for Stargrave and they have their own video. My Faith led first mate here, uh, found it a bit tricky to pick this model uh, but this is one of the raiders that wants to give from Imitation and Life Miniatures uh, and I think he works quite well, clearly toting an auto rifle there. Our Tekka Bounty Hunter, uh, very suitable model I think. Our Orphan on the Voyage of Discovery Falling in with a bad crowd. Um, it's a suitably petite little mo model. Once again, beautiful sculpt. Uh, absolutely loving the way this is looking. Our one and only blue skinned teleporting mutant. Uh, great addition to the crew. And last but not least, of course, our robot, uh, which is built out of a couple of kits, uh, but still from Imitation of Life. So I don't think of myself as having that many sci-fi miniatures. But what I do have is uh, a few bits and pieces I've picked up along the way for various games uh, that I think will go together to make a few good forces for this. Uh, one of the things I've done recently are obviously these spacemen, uh, undead spacemen, who will make great converted, uh, who are described as a nightmarish cyborg race that replenishes their ranks through captive and corpses. Uh, so yeah, they kind of work. I think that's a pretty cool, sort of Cyberman theme. And uh, yeah, they look great for that. Obviously I painted these up for Stargrave and they've got their own video. I've also got these guys, uh, I think they're called like C5 or something from Beyond the Gates of Antares. Uh, I've not finished repainting them, uh, but they'll make pretty generic sort of enforcers, imperial type troops in their sort of uh, faceless armor. Also from Beyond the Gates of Antares, I've got a reasonably decent Boromite force uh, who I might use as the engineer race or, you know, wherever else they might fit in. I'm also hoping prepping for this game will get me painting some other stuff. Uh, so I know this game calls for some sort of criminals, scum type people. Uh, and these are a variety of Mark Copplestone scavengers uh, that you can either pick up from North Star or Forlorn Hope. And while we're on the topic of unfinished projects, here is a selection of old metal uh, Necromunda Escher, uh, which I prefer to the newer plastic ones. And they definitely deserve a, a proper paint job. And they'll obviously make some pretty good sort of generic gangers, uh, you know, cyberpunk criminals uh, as well in this sort of world. And I think in style and scale, they match fairly well with my uh, crew. I've also got a whole variety of mutants and post-apocalyptic types 
all painted up as well from various games. We've got some from uh, one of the older Judge Dread games, as well as some stuff from North Star and Heresy. Uh, sorry, Hassle Free. These guys are from. So these might make some quite interesting personalities, uh, but also, yeah, g generic mutants where they're required. To represent some of the alien races, I've been 3D printing like a mad thing recently, and I printed these just because I like them, but hopefully I can fit them in here. These ones are Soviet pugs from the Red Nebula Patreon. Once again, uh, very much work in progress as far as the paint jobs go, uh, but lovely little models to paint. Also from Red Nebula, I printed out these uh, toads, uh, and I'm gonna. These remind me of sort of a mixture between Destiny and Bucky O'Hare. So I'm gonna paint these up in a sort of Bucky O'Hare theme. Um, yeah, as I said, also from Red Nebula, and they are lovely sort of little sculpts. A little bit more on the sort of cartoony style, but there again, my crew's not super serial, so should be quite a bit of fun. So all in all, I am really excited by this. As you can see, I have got plenty of minis to work on. Hopefully this will force me to get some more paint on some of the various different minis I've picked up over the years uh, that could do with a bit of love. Hopefully it'll mean I'll get some use out of my crew that I've been preparing and some of the other Stargrave bits and pieces I've been putting together. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you want to see me play some of this because I think unlike Stargrave and Rangers of Shadow Deep, because the games are procedurally generated, I shouldn't be actually spoiling any of the missions or any of the story. Uh, so that could be quite good to do a video on that. So let me know if you'd be interested in a sort of narrative video of me playing a game of this. And will any of you guys be playing or have you already played any tips or hints uh, on how to get the most out of it? Or out of any kind of solo gaming? And let me know if there's anything specific you'd like me to cover. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.